Hey everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger, and this right here is a little bit of a cluster of showers. Look at that. That is the tropical wave that is eventually going to track up into this direction up here. That is the Lesser Antilles uh, and Puerto Rico back over here. And as you can see, this thing is uh, starting to bubble up a little bit, not too much, but it is uh, slowly trying to battle that drier air and kind of organize here. But it's still not quite there. But in this video, we're going to be kind of be breaking down what this storm will do in the future, you know, how impactful it will be, who will be impacted. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So as you can see, we have had a little bit of an increase of chances with this. You see, there's an X right there that is denoting the location of those clusters of thunderstorms that might do something in the future. And then we have this little orange box or circle kind of looking like a, a, an eggplant or something there. And as you can see, that it denotes kind of the possible directions that this thing could go. We have some areas highlighted within this. We've got uh, areas like Puerto Rico. We got the Lesser Antilles right here. We have uh, Haiti and the Dominican Republic right here. We got Cuba right there and then Florida here. And as you can see, this thing is could go really in a couple of directions. There's a couple of scenarios. It could go over the mountainous regions of these areas and eventually kind of fall apart. Not really do much. Maybe reorganize in the Gulf of Mexico. Could kind of come pretty close to the Bahamas or over the Bahamas then kind of skirt towards Florida and then move up to the north and east. That's one of the possibilities we're watching out there for the Carolinas. Also, this thing could, um, the kind of the worst case scenario, or maybe actually not really, to be honest, because it wouldn't really have too much time to organize, would be that it goes over the Bahamas and then maybe, maybe strengthens into a hurricane as it approaches Florida. So a lot of different scenarios with this, with this storm right now. Let's kind of break down in the models what we can expect with this storm. So a couple of things that we're going to have to look at at in order to determine what this storm is going to do in the future. One is, is the air sinking or rising? Two is how much moisture is in the air? Three, how much shear is there? And then four, what are the water temperatures looking like out there? So we're going to go over all that right now. So first thing we're going to be looking at is the P watt or how much moisture is kind of available for these storms to kind of tap into as it kind of moves up into kind of the northern Caribbean near the Bahamas area and the European motto at least painting a little bit of dry air right now and that is keeping the storm at bay but look at this as I push this forward you can see this big old blob of moisture start to move in on the left side right in here and that is going to be enough for the storm to try to start to get organized at this point the shear is not going to be too favorable initially but it is going to eventually try to do something all right next we're going to look at at the shear that is going to be present with this storm and pushing this forward uh, into about Friday and Saturday, you can see with a lot of these reds and yellows out here kind of racing across the Caribbean and going up into the north there, you can see that this, this environment is not very favorable for tropical development right now. But as we go into like Monday and then Tuesday, you can see a lot of those reds kind of go away. And then as the system approaches, which is over here, you can see that we still have a decent amount of shear. So it is going to struggle here initially but it will get into a better and shear environment as it kind of moves off to the west and so this is the GFS solution you can see it's actually tracking the storm over the mountainous regions here initially and then eventually makes it into the Gulf of Mexico where it might eventually do something or it'll just stay a cluster of showers now the euro model on the other hand has a different solution as you can see there is a lot of shear kind of what the GFS is saying and then the euro initially are kind of on board here and then as we get into to about Monday, you can see that that shear starts to die down as that system approaches going into Wednesday. Look at that. Uh, still a decent amount of shear around it, so it's still going to struggle uh, with that shear. And as it pushes off to the north, you can see that it still has a decent amount of shear interacting with it, but eventually, as it gets into the Bahamas a little bit less, uh, as this thing kind of wraps up, kind of forms an anti-cyclone around it, kind of shielding it from some of that shear, and that will allow this storm to strengthen. The Euro, as you can see, is kind of pulling this up to the north so two majorly different scenarios you know you got the euro up here and the gfs all the way down here so you know we got tracks like this and then tracks like this and then kind of a recurve to the north one thing though that seems to be a pretty consistent theme is this area this kind of wider area here of just a lot of heat i mean look at this area especially around florida we have 32 31 that's in the nine or upper 80s almost into the 90s there 
of water temperatures that is extremely hot and definitely primed for hurricane activity pretty much anywhere where this thing could go uh, especially if it goes in that northern trek and avoids land uh, this thing is going to have opportunities to strengthen depending on the dry air that's around it and the sheer environment this thing could definitely strengthen into something a little bit more potent but again the huge question marks still remain on whether or not this thing is going to be able to form or if it's just going to kind of fall apart because of that shear and maybe you know the 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 air is a little bit sinking a little bit more than expected i mean even if this thing kind of goes into the mountainous regions and falls apart like the gfs is saying we are going to have to watch eventually to see if it will kind of try to reform maybe the shear environment gets a little bit more favorable maybe there's not as much dry air and it can have another opportunity a shorter opportunity but still an opportunity to maybe try to reform as it gets into the gulf of mexico all right next what we're going to be doing is looking at some of these different models deterministic runs this is just one run and then we'll look at a bunch of what runs all together and kind of see an average of what this thing will do so pushing this forward you could see that we have this system by the time we get into around saturday uh sunday tuesday then wednesday this thing is trying to form but it's over these mountainous regions here in the dominican republic and cuba there's a lot of mountains there so it's really going to struggle uh, in that region but after it comes into the gulf of mexico kind of last minute uh the gfs tries to pop this thing up into a tropical depression uh or a tropical storm as it approaches the panhandle of florida there so uh, one scenario over there in the panhandle in florida as a tropical storm so it'll be around 40 45 miles per hour the euro on the other hand has a completely different solution here so if we push this forward uh by the time we get to around wednesday this thing is trying to form over there near the lesser until as you can see we can have a little bit of a kink there in those lines and that continues to try to form kind of north and goes in, into like the bahama region and then as you can see right around that time that's when that shear is supposed to relax and then this thing tries to form uh into a tropical storm and a tropical depression and then really starts to deepen those pressures but look at that big old recurve up to the north uh, with this storm and that's going to be you know not a threat to the United States at least with that scenario but again there's multiple scenarios there but definitely don't rule out that this thing could recurve and just completely miss us altogether. now the Canadian model is a little bit more on agreement with the GFS it kind of brings a system into the some of these more mountainous regions keeps it shredded apart but as it enters into the Gulf of Mexico the Canadian model has this thing immediately trying to reorganize into a tropical storm and then eventually into a hurricane uh, or a strong tropical storm as it pushes into the Gulf of Mexico and makes landfall again uh, on the panhandle there of Florida, a little bit to the east of the GFS. So as of right now, we have a model spread from pretty much like this uh, all out into this region here. Everybody that lives in these areas needs to continue to pay attention to future forecasts, but in no way is it time to freak out. Last model we're going to be looking at here is the ICON model, and it's also on board board with the GFS and the Canadian model by bringing it over these mountainous regions and then up into the Gulf of Mexico where it tries to reform and look at it it's a little bit further to the west a little bit further to the west it'll probably recurve up to the north but maybe somewhere in between like Alabama and a Mississippi uh, landfall it doesn't go all the way out as far as the Canadian GFS so this is the furthest we can go but I mean yeah that's another area now that we kind of have to watch so really anywhere and along this coastline uh, and then also a little bit of a recurve is also possible. So those are at least all the scenarios with the deterministic models. Now looking at the ensemble models though, there's a different story. So this is kind of an average. It shows you all the scenarios that this thing can do all at once on a map and it kind of averages it out. So let's kind of push this forward. This is the EPS model. And as you can see, you know, it kind of brings this thing a little bit further to the north, like, you know, the Euro is saying, see, we got a lot of little members out there, you know, potentially in that tropical storm, tropical depression range as it goes into the Bahamas all those numbers start to drop into the 90s which is essentially you know a tropical storm or a stronger tropical storm but then look at this as we get closer to land there's a lot of different scenarios one of the scenarios that it kind of recurs up to the north and we got a couple scenarios going into Florida uh, also a couple scenarios going into South Carolina and North Carolina and then another couple scenarios kind of bringing it into the Gulf of Mexico so a lot of different scenarios here on the EPS that we're gonna have 
have to uh, continue to monitor. Eventually, this will tighten up. But I think the bottom line is, is that there's just a lot of uncertainty. Look at that. We even have another decently chance uh, kind of ensemble here uh, over in the Louisiana toes there. So huge spread here on where this thing could go. And I think that's why it's important not to really hyper focus on United States landfall right now until the models try to, you know, tighten up a little bit and we get a little bit of a better idea of what this thing is going to do. My overall thoughts on this are kind of still the same. It's still, I don't think, time to freak out, but this storm is going to eventually, you know, pose some sort of threat, whether it's to the fish or whether it's to the land. People do need to be paying attention to the latest forecast just so that you are in the know as this thing comes to you. But all right, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you did end up enjoying this forecast. And I'll see you guys on the next video.